Hey guys, what's up? Derek here from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So we're getting into 2 Nephi 31 for our second day here, as I brought up the doctrine of Christ yesterday. The faith, the repentance, the baptism, and the receiving of the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is very clearly stated. You go to verse 17 of chapter 31. Wherefore, do the things which I have told you, I have seen that your Lord and your Redeemer should do. That is called faith. For, for this cause, have they been shown unto me, that ye might know the gate by which you should enter, for the gate by which you should enter is repentance and baptism by water, then cometh the remission of your sins by fire and by the Holy Ghost. As I told you about this young man yesterday, this eight-year-old that I had interviewed. So when he was baptized, he's four-fifths of the way there on this doctrine of Christ, of really making it to where he needs to be. There is a number five, which might be, arguably, the most difficult of them all. And you go back to verses 15 and 16, where we kind of left off with he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. I know by this that unless a man shall endure to the end, in following the example of the Son of the living God, he cannot be saved. In fact, you get those first four principles and ordinance of the gospel, which is basically the fourth article of faith, right? You go to verse number 19. And now, my beloved brethren, after you've gotten into this straight and narrow path, I would ask if all is done. I say unto you, Nay. Now this is where it gets difficult. For ye have not come thus far, save it were by the word of Christ, with unshaken faith in him, relying wholly upon the merits of him who is mighty to save. And then you've got one of the most iconic verses in the Book of Mormon. I love this one. 2 Nephi 31 verse 20. Wherefore ye must press forward with a steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope. And, here's your two great commandments, a love of God and a love of all men. Wherefore, if ye shall press forward, Forward, feasting upon the word of Christ. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. And endure to the end. There's that little caveat right there. Behold, thus saith the Father, ye shall have eternal life. So like I said, when you're an eight-year-old kid, you're four-fifths of the way there. You've done those things. Now you just got to hang in there for the next 80 some odd years of your life, right? Now, the old English for steadfast, meaning a steadfastness in Christ, means to stand firm, to hold tight to those things that you know are true. Now, one of the best definitions I've heard for enduring to the end was a story I heard from Elder M. Russell Ballard. He said this, he said, shortly after returning from my mission, I heard our faithful state patriarch bear his testimony in our ward fast and testimony meeting. He was just over 90 years of age. He said, I pray every night that God will see me safely dead with my testimony burning brightly. Seeking to comfort this righteous patriarch, I said to him, patriarch, I know of no one more prepared than you are. He responded, my boy, no one is safe until he has endured to the very end of his life. Now, following that up, Elder F. Burton Howard years ago talked about his experience with Elder M. Russell Ballard. He said, I once attended a funeral service with Elder M. Russell Ballard. A statement he made there has remained with me to this day. He said, life isn't over for a Latter-day Saint until he or she is safely dead. There's that phrase again, with their testimony still burning brightly. Safely dead, what a challenging concept. Brothers and sisters, we will not be safe until we have given our hearts to the Lord, until we have learned to do what we have promised. So I think the way you really endure to the end is you exercise faith in Jesus Christ and his atonement. You repent. You are baptized. You receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But here is the problem. At that moment, that's where you and I struggle and we sin. So what do we do? We go back to exercising faith. We repent daily. President Nelson has told us to repent daily. We are baptized, meaning we keep partaking of the sacrament over and over and over again, week after week, month after month, year, decade, all of those. We receive that gift of the Holy Ghost constantly. That is what I believe is enduring to the end. I think going through through this cycle faithfully, religiously, consistently through our whole lives, that's what enduring to the end is. Until we are, like the story I said, safely dead on the other side. Because once you get to the other side, you're not going to fall away and you're going to be like, nah, I don't know if this gospel... Nope. Safely dead, I think, is a wonderful and a powerful and a very challenging concept, like it said. Now, I love verse number 21. Now, behold, my beloved brethren, this is the way. There is none other way, nor name given under heaven, whereby man can be saved in the kingdom of God. 
God. Now behold, this is the doctrine of Christ. Like I brought up yesterday, the doctrine of Christ, faith, repentance, baptism, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, and enduring to the end. It's what our missionaries teach, and it's what should be our focus. And it is the only and true doctrine of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, which is one God without end. Amen. I remember hearing one person talk about it shouldn't be enduring to the end. It should be enjoying to the end. And that is easier said than done, my friends. But if you can find the joy in the journeys, we've heard many of our prophets and apostles and many seasoned veteran members of the church talk about find that joy in the journey. That really is what enduring or enjoying to the end can really become for us. I am grateful for this chapter. I am grateful for the doctrine of Christ that is very plainly and clearly taught here. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing these messages. We are so grateful that you do that. If you like what you see, please click the like button and you got to go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. Godspeed and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.